So this is another video in the series for Math 1224 for UTSA. Today we'll be talking about 4.4, the logistic equation. So in previous uh, videos, we've dealt with a few different um, differential equations to model different situations. So one example was something along these lines. Let's say um, dy uh, dt, y is a function of time in particular, uh, equals k. Uh, y, so that the rate of change in y with respect to time is proportional to y itself. Okay, and when we solve that, we got things of the form uh, y equals e to the ky power, right? And um, in particular, the graph looks something like this. Oops. Well. Let's say, let's adjust this slightly. If the initial condition is that uh, when t is zero, y is some starting amount, right? Then we would need to have that amount in the front. And this would be like uninhibited exponential growth, okay? Then we considered, well, um, because this is unrealistic for lots of situations, you're not gonna have uninhibited um, exponential growth forever. So we considered, well, what if we had something like the following? What if we had dy dt um, was proportional to the remaining growth uh, capacity? So something like one minus y over m. m is some maximum. And again, the initial condition is some starting amount a, right? When we solve that, we got something like the following. We got, um, We got something like y equals m minus m minus a times e to the negative k over m t power. And that m, sorry. I don't want this to look uh, like, there we go, like that. Although in that example, we we did not do it symbolically with k and m. We did this numerically with, um, I think k was 5% and m was uh, 2,000 or 200, something, something along those lines. Anyway, what we got was a model a little bit like the following. There's some, oops, struggling with the interface here. There's some maximum value. This would be, um, This height level would be m, the maximum. And the graph would start out at some amount down here. And you would decay upward towards it. Oh, the straight line tool wants to help. Well, you know what straight line tool? You're right. That is better. So you start out at the amount a. And over time, the, the difference between um, the current amount and the maximum would decay. So it's exponential growth in a sense, but it's it's fairly different. So the shortcoming of this one is this assumes that if you were to start at zero, you would get up to that point anyway, which, for example, for population doesn't necessarily make a whole lot of sense. Like if you have zero zebra in your state or your city, it's probably going to stay zero, most likely, unless, you know, someone introduces, um, you know, an invasive species of some kind. I'm sure zebra could be invasive in certain areas. Um, like if they have no natural predators, then they would be, right? So that doesn't make a lot of sense for certain kinds of applications. So the next example we're going to look at is something called the logistic equation. So what would, what would have both features where, notice how this one, um, if we were to do this differently, if A is zero, Right. In fact, I didn't label it here. I probably should have. Uh, this is a, and I, I forgot to label that. A is the y-intercept essentially. If a is zero, right, then wouldn't this just be zero? So if you start at zero, you go just zero forever, right? If a is zero. Here, if a is zero, as I said, you you still increase because the difference decays. And in this one, if if um, A is M, 
you start at the maximum, you would stay there. Okay? Like if 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 a, I'm sorry, if a was m, if a was equal to m, then this term would be zero. And you just get y equals m. It stayed m forever. How can we combine those two into a better model? Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to incorporate uh, k, of course, there's some multiplier, right? And y and this factor 1 minus y over n. Because the factor y, this is what tells you that when you start at 0, you stay at 0. And this factor, 1 minus y over m, this is the factor that tells you when you start at m, you stay at m. If we use the product, we'll get something that if you start at 0, you stay there. If you start at m, you stay there. So it'll have both of those features. There is quite a lot more that could be said about this, um, but we are not going to go into that much detail. Um, if you take uh, differential equations or um, engineering analysis, you'll see more, more on this kind of thing. So the logistic equation looks like this. Um, and I guess I'll leave my, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll work in the middle and we'll draw it at the end. So, uh, oops, dy dt equals k times y times 1 minus y over m, some maximum value. And our initial condition is uh, 0 comma a, some starting amount. Center this a little bit better. There we go. So <clears throat> there's a couple of ways to get started with this. Um, and the order in which you do things doesn't matter that much. So for example, I could multiply by m on both sides. Because maybe I don't like having that fraction y over m. So let's go ahead and start with that. I'm going to multiply m on both sides. So I get m times dy dt. equals k times y times m minus y. This is going to make um, an antiderivative step a little bit easier. So then I can separate my variables. So I'll multiply dt on both sides. Um, again, thinking of this as the ratio of the differentials, not merely the derivative. And I will divide y times m minus y on both sides. So on the left, I'll have m over y times m minus y dy, and the right equals k dt. Okay, so now I need to integrate on both sides. Now you might notice on the left, I'm going to need to use um, partial fractions. I need to, a partial fraction decomposition. So in fact, let's do this. I suppose I can save on room a little bit, and maybe I should have started on the far left to begin with, I guess. Um, so I'm going to switch colors here. And we'll shrink down to a smaller stylus. And I'm going to try to work out this over here, you know, the partial fraction decomposition. So I've got uh, m over y times m minus y. Equals, um, I've already used a, so I'll start with b. So b over y uh, plus c over m minus y. So um, we will solve this the way we do, would with any partial fraction decomposition. We don't have any numbers. They're all letters, but we'll, we'll, we'll do our best. So now I'm going to multiply both sides by y times n minus y. So on the left, I'll just have m. On the right, I'll have b times m minus y. Remember, m is a, a number in this context. It's a, it's a maximum amount that if we were doing a practical example, we'd have that number at the beginning. Minus y plus c times y. Okay, so m equals uh, bm. There's a medical joke there for you if you want. by plus cy. So m equals I'm going to combine like terms here. I'll have C minus B in parentheses times Y. In fact, let's put that first. Let's let's um put this in descending order. So C minus uh, B times Y plus M times B or B times M. Okay. Over here, I'll say uh, zero Y. Okay. So basically... Um, I know that this coefficient has to equal this coefficient. 
and this coefficient has to equal this coefficient. So 0 equals c minus b, and m equals bm, which of course, this means that b equals 1, right? And this means that uh, b equals c. So c equals 1. So they're both 1. Convenient, right? If we go over here, change back to this color. So I'm going to have the integral of uh, 1 over y plus 1 over m minus y. dy. And the right-hand side, yeah, um, I'll leave it as for, for now. That's fine. It's easy enough, but that, that's fine. So on the left, I have, um, well, this is just going to be natural logarithm of, of y. And we'll assume that y is not going to be negative, right? y is some population. We're not going to allow negative values. Um, and then m minus y. And I'll, so I'll have a relatively easy substitution to do there. Basically, I'll need to borrow negative 1 to do the substitution. So I'm going to have um, ln of y minus ln of m minus y. And you might think, well, wait a minute. Don't we need absolute value? Remember that m is the maximum value the population can have, and y is the population. So the maximum possible value minus some current population can't be negative. So we don't need to worry about that. Uh, equals kt plus c. Okay. On the left, I'm going to use a property of logarithms. I have a difference of two logarithms, so I can combine them uh, to make a to make the arguments into a quotient. So y over m minus y. equals, of course, k, t plus c. So then I can move the um, base e to the other side. Logarithmic, it'll be a logarithmic base on the left. It'll become an exponential base on the right. So y equals, uh, or sorry, right, rather, y over m minus y equals e to the k, t plus c power. Okay. And if I want, I can go ahead and start working out um, using the initial condition. I guess I'll do that here. The initial condition is 0, comma a, right? So when t is 0, y is a. So a over m minus a equals e to the 0 plus c power, or in other words, e to the c, OK? So this guy, I can separate the right-hand side into two factors. So y over m minus y equals e to the k t power times e to the c. But of course, that's a over m minus a. We're probably going to run out of vertical space here, but we'll just go uh, make some vertical space. And I'll, I'll put this in front. It doesn't need to be, but that's fine. And there we go. That is the solution to the... Uh, well, it's the implicit solution to the differential equation. This this is essentially it, but we've got y in two places, and that's you know not the best. So we're going to need to rearrange things a little bit to get y by itself, because I want to have y as a function of time. What's the population as a function of time? So there's a couple ways to do this, and we have a, a fair bit of vertical space. So one way to do that that might make things a little more... Um, pleasant for us is to treat this as some constant temporarily so we can get y by itself without writing this entire thing over and over and over. So let's call this, I don't know, uh, j. Let's call this j for uh, just 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 don't write that for, for a while. Okay. So j is the whole right hand side. So um, I'm going to zoom in here a bit and probably write a little bit smaller because I don't want to run out of room. So y over m minus y equals j. And I want to solve for y. So I'm going to multiply m minus y on both sides. So y equals j times m minus y. And I'll distribute on the right jm minus jy. And then I'll add jy on both sides. And then I'll factor y on the left. 
So y times 1 plus j equals jm. And I'll divide by 1 plus j on both sides. So y equals jm over 1 plus j. All right. And what I'll do is I'll come up. Uh, yeah, we'll come up here and say, okay, well, then that means that y equals, well, j is that, that mess there. So a over m minus a times e to the kt power times m over 1 plus a over m minus a. times e to the kt power, okay? And that's still pretty messy. I've got fractions inside of fractions. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply top and bottom by m minus a. Let's try to clean this up a little bit. So in the numerator, I'll essentially um, just cancel these. The bottom's a little bit more complicated. Um, this factor will pile up here, and I'll have 1 times m minus a, so I get m minus a. In this factor, it'll cancel, so I'll just have a there. So this equals um, am e to the kt okay, over m minus a plus a. You know, I probably could have done one better on this. That's okay, that's fine. I, I'm, I'm gonna have to do another step, but that's okay. Plus a times e to the kt power. Um, and that might seem like, yeah, that's pretty good. Um, lowercase t, not, not uppercase t. Oops. There, there is a little bit more algebra we could do to simplify this um, a little further. You might, you might think, um, really, that seems pretty simple. But actually, if I multiply top and bottom by e to the negative kt power, it actually gets a little better even. Okay, so I get uh, equals. So this guy and this guy. Their exponents are opposites, and when you multiply two exponential expressions with the same base, you add the exponents. So I'm going to get e to the zero. So in the top, e goes away entirely. I'll just have am on top. On bottom, uh, for this term, when I multiply with e to the negative kt power, the e to kt will just cancel out. I'll just have a. This term, I'll have m minus a in parentheses times e to the negative kt. And you might say, okay, so we're done, right? That That's it. Well, s sort of. There's This is not the standard form. There's more we can do. I do think this is pretty good. We could stop here, but let's go do what, what is standard. Um, I'm going to multiply by 1 over a on top and bottom. And the reason is this a will go away. This a will become a 1. And then this fraction will become a little bit more complicated, but we're going to... We're going to have fewer symbols overall. So now we get y equals m over m minus a over a times e to the negative kt power plus 1. And that's as simple as it gets. Um, typically, the order of the bottom is, is written uh, differently. The 1 is typically written first, 1 plus m minus a over t times e to the negative kt power. But but this is the standard form. And notice that the maximum value is the numerator. And this is called the carrying capacity. Okay. And um, 
K is the, the uh, growth factor. And then M minus A over A. This is, um, this is basically a, a, a factor or a parameter that adjusts how long it takes to reach the midway point between your, um, your, your starting amount and your maximum, basically. Okay, so yeah, that's, that's basically it. So this is the solution to the logistic equation. So this is called a logistic model with initial value 0 comma A. So I'll even put that here again. So yeah, that, that's the logistic model. So it's fairly complicated, and we needed um, um, partial fractions. So I guess, yeah, so we, we need partial fractions to do this. So it's fairly complicated. So while editing the video, I noticed that I had forgotten to go back and graph the logistic model. So here's what it looks like. If um, here's our, our x-axis, or our t-axis, really. Let's call it t. And here is our y-axis, right? And here is our maximum value, which we will approach asymptotically. The graph starts out at some amount, goes up exponentially temporarily, and then tapers off. Okay, this is called a logistic growth model. Before we simplified stuff, this is the expression we had gotten for the solution to the differential equation. And notice that if your starting amount is zero, you have a zero here, and you have a zero here, well, the whole numerator would be zero, and the bottom would be one plus zero. So if you start out at zero, you'll persist at zero forever, okay? Um, now, that doesn't work here, because here a can't be zero. You can't divide by zero, but we got that through an algebraic manipulation. Now, you could ask, okay, well, what if you start out at m, and then would you persist there forever? Well, because of the way this comes out, a can't be m. The starting amount can't be m because you have to divide by m minus a. And you can't divide by zero, so that wouldn't really work. Now, in this version, where we did an algebraic manipulation, a could be m. You could start out with a equals m, and this whole uh, term on bottom would be zero. You just have m over one. So if you ignored the fact that this one will not accept a equals m, and you focus on using this one only, if you did that, if you, you know, forgot about that temporarily and just focused on this, then you say, oh, well, yeah, if you stay at M, or start at M, rather, you will stay at M. Um, really, um, there, there is um, a lot going on here um, that you will see more detail on. If you take differential equations or engineering analysis, you'll get more detail, which we just is beyond the scope of this course. But if we don't have... Um, these unusual cases of a equals zero or a equals m that you're starting between zero and m and you work towards m then this model works fine and there's no weirdness with dividing by zero so i want to do another example well another i want to do an example using numbers and i think um i think what i want to do is just show here's how you can just plug in the results we don't need to rework the formula every time um, ideally, you understand the formula and how to get it, um, but I, I do want to show, well, now that we have a formula, we went, all through the, we went through all the work of doing this with, with a formula, we should leverage that formula. So, um, suppose that there are currently 10,000 armadillos in Bayer County and that the largest population that could be sustained is 100,000. So, the current amount is 10,000, that's A, current amount. Uh, the carrying capacity, M, that's the 100,000. If the, growth, if the growth factor is 10%, that's K, but you convert to a decimal. How many will there be after three years? Okay, so I can take the formula Y equals, and now I have to remember that formula. It's off screen. Um, M over M minus A over M. No, over A. Yeah, over A. And in fact, you know what? I should write it in the order it's typically written. It's usually one plus. So M minus A over A. E to the negative KT power. Okay. So um, 10,000, that's A. 100,000, that's uh, M. And then K is 10% or 0 0.1. So this is going to be, I guess I'll put it here actually. Uh, 100,000. And probably if we wanted to, we could say, oh, let's make the function um, in terms of thousands and just use 10 and 100, just so our numbers are smaller. 
if if we wanted to, we could probably do that. Um, so one plus so m minus a that's going to be ninety thousand over a. So ninety thousand over ten thousand is nine e to the negative 0 0.1 t power. So that, that function now describes the population of armadillos over time. So after three years, we just got to plug in three. So when t equals three, y equals 100,000 over one plus nine times e to the negative 0 0.1 times 3 power. Let me get a calculator. There we go. So 100,000 over 1 plus 9 times e to the negative 0.3 power. And I get about 13,040. 42, actually. Uh, two nine, so we got a we got a third of an armadillo um, on its way. So that's about how many. And you could do things like, well, how many will there be, or how long till you get five? I'm sorry, uh, not five. Sorry, I was thinking about five years. How long till you get twenty thousand or fifty thousand? So we can even say, yeah, let's do that. How long? Until. Uh, 20,000. Well, just set the function equal to 20,000. So 20,000 equals 100,000 over 1 plus 9 times e to the negative 0 0.1 t powder. powder <laughs> power. Um, and there actually is a way to... Save yourself some effort if you backtrack and go back and use um, this instead. Is that the one I want? This instead? That might work because y is the number that's 20,000. You know what y is. So if you go back and use this equation instead, you can save yourself some effort. But but that's, that's okay. We'll just use this one. So um, I can divide both sides by 20,000. So get uh, 1 equals 5 over 1 plus uh, 9 e to the negative 0 0.1 t power. Uh, powder. It's power. <laughs> negative 0 0.1 t power. So then I can multiply by that denominator. So 1 plus, I'm going to get it right this time, e to the negative 0 0.1 t power equals 5. Subtract 1 equals uh, 4 divided by 9. We're going to have room here. Okay, so move E. So 0, negative 0 0.1 T equals LN, 4 ninths. So um, T equals negative 10 times LN, 4 over 9. You might get worried. Wait, negative time? Remember, um, ln of a number less than 1 will be negative. So this is going to work out fine. So negative 10 times ln 4 over 9. So I get 8.109. So probably could just round that to 8.1. So about a little after 8 years, that's when you'll have, um, was it 20? I said, yeah, 20,000 armadillos based on that model. So this video is shorter than usual, but... The video or the, the section is only about the logistic model. So there we go.